Welcome everyone to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best dead gum garden show on the radio and the internet as well. Glad to be here this evening. Got Miss Hoss in the house. So uh, we're going to be talking about some things this afternoon. We've got a lot of props, a lot of different stuff. It's going to be real interesting. We're going to be talking about pickle for nickel. How about that? We'll lead you into that a little, little, little better, a little longer, a little further in. How about that? All right, so let's talk about a garden. Man, it's been South Georgia here. The weather has been good for the last three weeks. Now, we've had a lot of rain, but it's been a lot cooler. It's been real nice outside. I mean, the temperature's kind of held down a little bit. Uh, humidity's been a little high, but it has been nice as far as the heat wave goes. Yes. Now, we're expecting it for long. It's going to punch us in the... A lot of rain, though. Yeah, punch us in the stomach for long. A lot of rain, but it's been it's been nice. Nice little change up for summertime. Mm -hmm. In my garden, now, if you folks watched uh, our show a couple weeks ago, we talked about fall planting, and I have got my tomatoes and I've got my peppers up in the greenhouse growing good. I'm getting ready for my fall planting. It's not going to be long before I start some other stuff. I got cover crops nice growing. I got sunflowers, black oil sunflowers, sorghum stand grass. Uh, I got some more pro cut sunflowers growing in a smaller spot. Okra is coming in like crazy. 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 We got the uh, Jing orange okra this year, and it's it's abundant right now. I really like it because it can get a little bit longer and still be tender. Yep. So if you're out of town and you miss a day, it's okay. That's the main benefit I've seen about it. This mm -hmm. It stays tender a little bit I, longer. I like the taste of it, too. Yeah. It's not, I would say it's maybe not quite as productive as jambalaya. I know it's not as productive as jambalaya, but still, it's a nice one to switch up to every now and then. Of course, it's a red okra. Uh, it's real similar in color to red burgundy, but it's a good okra there. And uh, I mean, we got, we got all kinds of stuff. What about your garden? My garden, I'm getting ready to plant sunflowers. So a couple of weeks ago, I planted some seeds, three dwarf varieties, and he's going to show you what they look like. Yep, here they come. If I can get them out. So sun gold, can you read the things? Yep, sun gold. We got uh, Mardi Gras and sun gold and sun sunspot. Yeah. So these are going to go in the garden um, probably this week. You probably need to hit them. Uh, yelling a little bit. We need to hit them a little bit more fertilizer. Well, I think they need to go on the outside. And yep. Be hardened a little bit. But they're about ready. So they're about ready. I'm going to start some more this week. So I have another crop coming on. Try to get some every two weeks. Yep. Um, the other thing I have is okra. Now and the okra is for your garden because my garden is still producing okra. We've made a mess there. I know. Um, so the okra, this is jambalaya okra. And on uh, Instagram a couple weeks ago, I, someone had asked if you um, soak it in water versus milk versus not soaking it, have we found any benefits? So I soaked these seeds, some in water, some in milk, and then some not. The ones that were not soaked and the water ones actually came up first within a couple of days. I so the milk, well, the ones you soaked milk was the last ones to come up? The ones I soaked in the milk was the last ones to come up. But as you can see, they're all about the same size. So did it make a difference? Not this time of year and because. And I can tell you this for okra from experience. The main thing about okra is you got to have that heat. So if you got the heat and moisture, they're going to pop up regardless what you do, whether you soak them or not. It really doesn't make no difference from what we've seen if you soak them. No wise tell is soak them in milk. You know, a lot of people go by that. We can't tell any difference. But if you plant okra in cool soils, you're going to have problems. It's just clear and simple as that. So you got to have nice, warm soils, nice, warm nights to get your okra up. Look at there. Ain't that pretty? We had one out of uh, 24 that didn't Two. come up. Two, oh yeah, yeah, two out of 24. You know, both of them was in the uh, the water soap. So both the ones didn't come up. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. And then the ones that we didn't do anything to except plant, 100% germination. Yep. Within three days. Um, you know, that okra, uh, make it all the way to frost. I mean, we'll have okra with this plant here. We let our other one that I got in my garden go to these start producing, and then we kind of let that fade away. We'll have okra all the way probably into hey, maybe 1st of December. Right. Get that right there for me. Yep. Um, the roselle is about thigh high. I did have to thin it out. Thigh high. 
You said Taha. 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 Ma Taha. Yo Taha. Probably your name. That's yeah. uh, halfway between Ni and Hani High. Yeah. 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 Um, I did have to thin it out. Um, I had planted it too close. I had planted it on each of the emitters, and when it came up, it was way too close. It's still pretty close. You need a lot of room. For Rosella, yeah. For Rosella. Have you ever seen Rosella on a donut? I may have. Yep. I'll talk about that later. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple of things. I've been talking to suppliers for the last few days. I've been getting some emails. We're kind of getting in that season now where suppliers are starting to contact us and talk about ordering for next year. Now, this is what we're seeing. Of course, we had, it's no surprise to anybody that we're seeing seed increases, but we're getting some emails from seed suppliers. Reserves are really low. Now, they're not calling it necessarily a shortage, but their reserves are really low. So we're seeing some varieties out of stock. It's not widespread, but we are seeing some uh, increases, some price increases, and uh, maybe some, some stretches on availability going into next year. We may be having some problems. So what they're telling us is, besides the price increases, being that some of the reserves are being used up, that we're going to be later this year getting our fresh seeds in than normal. Now that's just not talking about us, that's everybody. So the process when these seeds mature out during the summertime and when they go to what they call the mill, which actually they get processed and milled down and cleaned to the seed, and then the germination test and all have to be run, that whole process there takes a while and they think it's going to go further in to December or January. So we and everybody else is going to be later getting our seeds this coming year than we have been in the past. And it's really going to probably put us all in a kind of a bind. But that's what they're warning us of that. Of course, we, don't, we can't do anything about the price increases. We kind of knew that was coming because we've seen price increases, increases across the board. Uh, another thing that I thought was really interesting was I got a call from our potting soil supplier. Now, if you didn't know this, just about all the peat in the United States comes out of Canada. And all these big pot and soil suppliers own all these places in Canada that, that get the peat out and process it. And they're telling us that there's going to be a big shortage next year on pot and soils. They warned us to go ahead and be placing our orders now for next year. And uh, we we're probably going to go ahead and do that just to be safe. But we're seeing price increases there as well. And the big thing they say is going to be a shortage, which I thought was very unusual. Uh, polymers, the bags, is an issue. But the peat also seems to be a huge issue as far as being a short supply. So as we go into next year, it looks like it's going to be interesting as well as far as getting supplies and everything. We think we're going to be okay pretty much across the board because we're planning way in advance. We work some good vendors and they always try to give us a heads up of what we need to do to be prepared for that. Our seed vendors, as long as our pot and soil and, and our hard good uh, vendors as well. We're still facing shortages, believe it or not, on wood handles, hoe handles. We're having a terrible time getting hoe handles in. Uh, there's probably about four or five manufacturers in the United States that make these. The one we deal with is out of Arkansas and he's a nice guy. I talk to him pretty regularly on the phone. And then he told me the other day that the Chinese were buying a lot of these hardwood logs, putting them on containers, carrying them back to China. And it really didn't make sense to me until I got the process of that. But these containers are going back empty anyway. So they're putting logs on these containers, shipping them back to China and processing them. So that's driving up the, the demand for these hardwood logs. So we're having a big issue getting handles in. I hope that kind of washes out in the next six months or so. We'll see how it goes. But as of right now, it's probably, of all the things we are, are having trouble getting, wood handles are number one right now. When's the cedars going to be back in stock? Cedars, we hope, is going to be back in stock by the end of the month. Um, we're still having, we got two components there that we're still out on. And, if, you know, you've heard all this thing about the Ford pickups where they got them stacked up everywhere, but they're missing the chip in there because they can't, we work the same way on the cedars. We got everything but two little bitty small parts, components. And we're supposed to have them in this month. As soon as we do, we'll start getting those together. So it's challenging, but we'll work through it as well. And uh, look here, it's fig season. Did you uh, know that? It is. I know. Every time I try to find Greg, I look in the shop, I look in the house, I look in the office. And where do I find Greg? In the fig trees. We have how many? 14. 14 fig trees. Now, they're not 
real old, but we have a, a few of them out there and uh, they're coming along. But I want to show you a little something here. So brown turkey fig is probably my least favorite. And I said I wasn't going to plant one because they're the most popular. And I don't know why, but I just didn't really feel like I wanted one because they have an issue with the eye here being open on them. It gets bugs and they're bad. But my aunt has one down the road and uh, she called me the other day and said, Greg, you got to come get some figs. So she knows how well I love them. So um, I went down there and picked a few to show y'all here on the show. Now they're starting to crack a little bit because they've had plenty of water. But these come in about two weeks before any of my figs did. So what I think I'm going to do, going against something I said I wasn't going to do, I'm going to do what we call an air layer. I'm going to propagate me a cutting off of her brown turkey fig tree. And when I say air layer, it sounds really intimidating. But if you want to get you a cutting off a fig tree in the summertime, that is the way to do it. YouTube it, go to air layer. You know, it is simple, it's easy to do. It's very, I've been very successful doing it. So look at, if you want to, if you, somebody's got a tree that you want to cut off of, do the air layering process and I think you'll be really ple pleasantly surprised. So the I brown like turkey, the brown turkey is a good fig. It has its drawbacks, but it's a good fig. It's an early production, which is I like. I can start yeah. eating figs a couple weeks earlier. Now these are some of the unique figs that I've got out there and, and I've got one tree that's coming a little bit early. This is what we call a honey profile fig. And you can see it's a little bit darker and maybe a little bit larger than that brown turkey is. And uh, it's a really good fig. I like it a lot, but I don't know if it's going to make my cull or not, if I'm going to cull it or not. We'll see. See there it has the white fleshy inside and they call that the profile on that flavor is called a honey profile. It didn't have that punch to it like the berry profile ones do, such as the, uh, I think that's brown turkey's a berry. Maybe it's not. Yeah, I think it is a berry. Yeah, you see it's a little more redder inside there. It is a good bit sweeter. It's a, it's a lot better fig than this one is. But I've had a lot of rain, but it's just a little something different. So there we have it, figs. And look here, if you're not a part of our Row by Row group on our Facebook, we have a lot of people on there that are way more experienced than me in growing figs and i do like to grow figs yeah. we have a lady on there linda sanchez yes. and linda is out of louisiana and i hope linda don't mind me calling her out on the show but her and her husband have this huge fig orchard and uh she does a great job posting pictures on there always enjoy seeing them and she probably knows more about fig varieties than anybody else on our row by row Facebook group. So reach out to Linda there. I'm, I'm sure she'd be glad to answer your questions. If you have any questions about varieties and things like that. Now, our daughter yes. lives in Ohio, which is in Zone 6. And we was up there recently and, and, and in conversations with her, she said she had ordered her fig tree. And I said, Megan, you cannot grow figs up here in Zone, zone 6. six. But she said, oh, yes, I can. I did my research. So she ordered one called a, I wrote it down here, a new Let's see here, a Newfoundland. So make sure I got this right. Yeah, a, excuse me, Nord a northern, a northern fig. Nordland. Nordland fig, and is I looked it up, and it is originally from Switzerland. So it will take a amount of cold weather. And she also ordered her a hardy Chicago fig. Now that's one we don't grow down here in the south. I knew it was fairly hardy, but it is a smaller fig. And if you're in a cold climate, these two would probably be two good ones for you to look at. Again, that is the Nordland fig and also the hardy Chicago. I would say zone six, zone seven maybe, but I know zone six you'd probably want to go to those variety. The brown turkey has also got a good bit of cold tolerance to it as well. So hmm. you may can slip this one by, I'm not sure. But anyway, there you have your fig update. It's my favorite time of the year when I love figs to come in. And her garden was just coming in. Yep, it just was. the um, zucchini, the squash, the tomatoes, or sunflowers was really surprising. Yeah, we take things for granted down here because we think everybody's kind of in the same situation we are mm -hmm. when uh, our garden comes in. You know, our, our squash and stuff are, are on their last leg, you know, going out. Up there in zone six, man, they just coming in. Everything's looking good. Tomatoes about this big right here. They were still green, but they're going to have tomatoes before long. Let's so, talk about our trip we took. Yeah, so uh, a few days ago, uh-oh. I dropped something. Excuse me a minute. I'll be right back. 
A few days ago, we took a, excuse me, I'm going to fall. <laughs> a few days ago, we took a trip to Ohio and uh, to visit family, but also we went to a, a horticultural show. And that horticultural show is called The Cultivate. It's one of the largest horticultural shows there are out there, and it's in Columbus, Ohio. And we spent a day there at the trade show. And we like to go to these trade shows because it's been a while since we've been able to travel. And when you get out and get to these trade shows, you see what's, you know, what's trending, what's happening, what's new, and we've missed that. Yes, we have. So we got up there and we saw a lot of interesting things. And one of the trends that was really interesting to me that I didn't know that we got there was the trend now for these plant breeders are breeding these miniature tomatoes and peppers. This time. Yeah, to be grown inside. For these people that live in apartments, townhouses, they don't really have a garden spot, they want to grow things inside or out on a patio, they have bred these tomatoes and peppers, and I'm talking about hot peppers or sweet, sweet peppers, peppers or whatever, in these very compact, small pots. That will so, sit on your windowsill. Yeah, or you can grow them inside on a grow light. And you know what? You can grow and have tomatoes and peppers year around. And lettuce. And lettuce, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the uh, it was interesting to see what had happened. Also, a couple more things. They have bred some zinnias. Oh, yeah. That are Gorgeous. compact for containers. And sunflowers. Are, and sunflowers as well. So sunflowers and zinnias, we've seen those. Now, these wouldn't make good cut flowers. But they were wonderful in containers. And I think they'd do good as a border also. And I found some donuts. Um, one of the viewers, I had shared where I was at on Road by Road Show. And they said, you got to find the donut shop at the north market so i did it was a short walk away from there yeah just a block or so and i found we're going to throw a picture of this up a donut with a roselle icing mm -hmm. or glaze yeah that's that ought to be illegal i think it was healthy it was roselle it was healthy yep. yeah yep. on the donut <laughs> Yeah. So what are you fixing? All right, so everybody knows that I'm uh, working on my diet here. So uh, we're going to do a little presentation. Sheila is on pickle for nickel. And I, in the meantime, are going to partake in a little bit of my salad here. Now I'm going to show you what I've been doing. Of course, these are pea shoots, which I have fell in love with. Mm -hmm. So we've got pea shoots, we've got a little onion, Got a little pepper cut up in there. That's that um, habanero heatless. Habanero heatless. So we got pea shoots as the base. Your onions. My onions. We're going to add figs. Mm, yep. So we got these figs nice cut up. Look at there. We have the empty jar. And then I'm going to add pecans. I love ro roasted, roasted pecans. 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 It's hard to get too many of those. Hey, let's go ahead and use them all know about that. And then goat cheese. Now I didn't, I have in my prior life had milk goats and made my own goat cheese, but this is store-bought. Well, that's because I got the plastic on it. This is store-bought. Getting a little eager there. I'm getting a little eager there. Store-bought goat cheese. You know, it's been a long time since we've made our own goat cheese. I, I think we should get us some more milk goats. What's your Goat cheese, soap. Yep. So I put a little of that on there. I'm going to put that whole thing on there. And then I got some of this right here. Tell them what this is. Okay. This is some Italian, let me see what it is. Italian cherry um, tomatoes that I canned. If y'all watched the show a couple of weeks ago, he tried some that I pickled and he was not a fan of them. So I decided to try a different recipe, and we should post that later this week or next week. Um, so these are actually canned, so you can put them up on a shelf, and they'll last up to two years. Um, he actually tried these before the show because I was not going to have that face that I had last time. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked them. So we're going to try some of these on there. Yep. So tomatoes. So it's just some peppers, tomatoes, onions, and some Italian seasoning. Everything out of the garden with the exception yeah. of the Italian season. We don't grow that. Yep. I love those little tomatoes there and peppers. Okay. Yeah. And then for dressing. So this is some avocado oil and some Italian, not Italian, some um, fig, black Bas mission fig balsamic vinegar. Did you shake it up here? No, I didn't. It's what now? Tell me that again. Avocado oil. And avocado oil, which if you hadn't tried, I highly recommend it. I've been on that as of lately. I like it. Some black mission fig balsamic vinegar mixed hmm. together. Hmm. 
So there we have it. So I'm going to be partaking in this while you are talking about pickle for nickel. There's a big old piece of garlic in there. Yeah, they are. It'll be okay. Okay. So cucumbers. Everybody has abundance of cucumbers. Now, ours didn't do that well this year, but I have seen on the Robo Row group. Well, I'm going to give me another shot at it come fall. We're going to plant a good fall yeah. crop. Um, so what to do with all these cucumbers? One of the things I like to do with them is pick them. And one of the things I kind of mess with a little bit is fermenting. So I want to show you all a quick, easy recipe for fermenting your cucumbers. Um, you can do a big batch or small batch. What I like about this is you just do a couple jars at a time, or I use a large two quart jar. Um, so if you're a beginner and you just want to try it, this is a great recipe. Um, and if you like it, then you can just multiply it by however many you have and do a big batch of them. But they're good to eat in one to two, three days, um, really good at a week, and they'll keep in your refrigerator for three months. So you say, why ferment? Um, fermentation, you use those natural bacteria to do the job for you. You're not standing over a, slow, a stove doing the water bath. Also, probiotics, which somebody needs, really, these days. Yep. Pro, it's, that sounds good anyway. It sounds like everybody needs some so probiotics. So instead of taking a pill, you can just eat a pickle. Um, so let me tell you a little story on this. So my grandparents, which, who I call Mama, who's still alive, she's 94, and Papa, they had a store, a little grocery store in Meggs, Georgia. It's called Tatum's Grocery. And as a little girl, we went down there quite often, spent the weekends down there, and she had a jar of pickles sitting by the cash register. Um, and love those pickles. I still remember how good they taste. Um, never refrigerated, it was just a jar of pickles. Now you might have seen pickled eggs. Uh, pig feet, pickled pig feet. You know, we used to see sausage. those sausages, pickled pig feet, pickled eggs. I've never eaten one, but I always want to throw. There's always in that big jar up there on the counter. So when you're checking out, you could reach in there and get it. And you know, I don't ever remember, remember anybody washing their hands. They just reached in there and got yeah. one. Did no, they have well, a little? No, uh -uh. You no, just you reached in there and got you one. Yeah. How much do they charge for them pickles, Sheila? You could buy a pickle for a nickel. A pickle for a nickel. <laughs> so let me talk about fermenting. So there's three things that you need to be careful of when you're fermenting. Is The number one thing is cleanliness. You need to have your, all your equipment clean, your vegetables clean, only use your good, and we're just going to talk about cucumbers today. You can ferment all kinds of things. I'm big into fermenting when I make wine. But as far as vegetables, I've really only done the pickles. So get everything clean. Whether you use a crock or you just use a mason jar, make sure it's sterilized. The crock, wash it good with soap. Um, your utensils, your cutting surface, everything needs to be clean. So I'm trying to get some of this uh, dirt off of here. Then um, the other thing you need is your brine. So your brine is your salt and water solution. And the brine strength is the amount of salt per weight in a certain volume See, of liquid. Vinegar also or not? Yes. So you need salt, salt, vinegar, and water. Right. And this brine. recipe that I'm going to talk about. Um, you want to keep that brine one to two inches above your cucumbers. You want to keep the cucumbers covered in it. And also with the brine, temperature is the key. If it's too cool, it's going to be too slow fermentation and you're going to have some spoilage. If you have it too warm, it's going to be too fast and you're going to end up with those slimy cucumbers that nobody wants. So the ideal temperature for this fermentation is 65 to 75 degrees. Talk about the strength of the brine. Just the strength of the brine. So the recipe I'm going to use today is a 3.5, 3.6% and it's two tablespoons of pickling salt to four cups of water. Now, back in the olden days, their brine was 10%. That's why they could leave it on the counter and everybody stick their hand in the jar. <laughs> it, was, it was very well preserved. Um, these days, everybody has a fridge, 
And now what I like about these small batches is it doesn't take up a whole lot of room in the fridge. Also, if you're just getting your feet wet and you don't like it, you've just got a small batch to do away with, not or a Or you big can batch. change up your change up your recipe. Yeah, you can always add some pepper flakes, some different herbs in there. You can do all kinds of things with this. Um, the third thing you need to be careful of is to check it daily. You want to monitor to make sure it's still fermenting. You, when you tap on the side of the jar, you'll see bubbles come up. That means it's still going. Once it stops fermenting, that's when you need to put it in the fridge. Now this recipe, in two to three days, you can actually eat it. It's best, the flavor's best at one week, and then it keeps up to three months in the fridge. Now, you may get a little bit of white foam on the top. That's just yeast, that's normal. You wanna skim that off every day. And sometimes you might get a little mold in there. The cleaner you are with the process, the less chance, and not letting air in there, the less chance you're gonna to be to get that mold. And don't let that mold scare you. Now, if you get the mold in there, just skim it off. You always wanna keep a little extra brine, so you might have to add some back if you do have a problem and you're skimming it off. Now, some people, when they get through with the fermentation process, they'll add brand new brine to it. But if you do everything correctly, you should be okay. So I'm gonna show you real quick like, this is my two quart jar. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use two one quart jars. But I've had this a couple years and I really like it. So the first thing you wanna do is put your garlic in the bottom. I got about four cloves of garlic here. And then you wanna use about six sprigs of dill. Now I had to buy this because we didn't have any, um, but I really like to use my own fresh dill. Now also the brine, let me talk about that a minute, is you don't wanna put this in there hot. You don't wanna cook your cucumbers, um, and you wanna let the bacteria do the work. So if you put this in there hot, you're gonna kill that good bacteria. So you don't wanna do that. Okay, so the cucumbers, it takes about eight cucumbers here. And what you wanna do is cut off that blossom end. Now, how do you tell what's the blossom end? So the blossom end is the opposite end of where your stem is. See this stem right here? This would be what you call the blossom end. <clears throat> For some reason, or other, the blossom end has some enzymes in there that'll call these pickles to soften more on the blossom end. So it's recommended that you chop a little bit of this end here off. So if you didn't learn nothing else today, you learned where the blossom end on a cucumber is at. Okay, I'm gonna tie the stem off too. Yep. And it's normally on the yellow end. All right. You wanna have good cucumbers here your very best. So I'm gonna pack those cucumbers in there. Now if you're doing slice ones. You can do slice ones, you can do them in spears. Um, and we have a tool that's in the kit yep. that um, Pickle packer. packs these in here. Okay. So I'm just gonna put that much in there because I want one to two inches of brine above my pickles. And that's what I like about this jar and this recipe is you can just do a little bit of it. Let's see, I hope it'll make a mess here. So I'm gonna pour this brine. This is two tablespoons of salt that I've, and four cups of water that I boiled until the salt was dissolved and one fourth cup of vinegar. And I uh, have a what little kind of vinegar? Just white distilled vinegar. Okay. okay. So then the next thing you want to do is put your weights on there. Actually tap it, make sure there's and that's where that thing comes in good. The pickle pack, which is yeah. made out of wood, you can kind of pack it down yeah. in there. Bounce made out those of hard bubbles wood. out. So then you have these pebble weights that you put in here that's gonna hold those cucumbers down. Yeah, if you got some what we call floaters wanna run up to the top, then they're You wanna keep weights. it submerged yep. under the brine. Okay, and then these are the pickle pipes that we carry that goes on top. So it's it, an airlock. It seals it, there's a little seal there, and it lets the air that needs to escape, escape. But it will not let air back into the jar. Right, and then these are the lids that go on top And there you go, that's all you've got to do. Sit it on your counter, 65 to 75 degrees. 
in a couple of days, you're going to have some excellent dill pickles. Monitor it daily. Make sure it's bubbling. It's within one day, it's going to start fermenting. Um, a week, it's going to be excellent. It'll last in your refrigerator up to three months. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, all these products we sell. Which leads us up to the product, product of the week. Product of the week. Yep. <clears throat> Everything you need there, with the exception of the vinegar of salt and the cucumbers. And we can see the cucumber seeds we have right here in the fermentation kit comes the wood thing there that is the pickle packer and you got the set of the and all this is the wide mouth which is really cool because that's mainly what we like to use because it's so much easier to work with the wide mouth getting the cucumbers in there so you've got the pickle pipes and you've got the packer and you got the weights mm -hmm. now you will have to buy these it does not come with not these the tough these. bands the tough bands, which I really like because these are made out of... But a, you can use a regular screw band. You can, but these right here are a food safe plastic. You don't have to worry about rust. So I like these and these are reusable. So you can use this over and over again and, uh, and uh, wash them in your dishwasher. And the rust thing is a big issue for me because you ever took the uh, lids off some of them where they've been there a while and they get that old cruddy stuff on them. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with that with the... Uh, with the tough bands now, there. The individual ones we sell in the regular mouth. So you can get these bands in the regular mouth. You can get the weights in the regular mouth. And, and the pickle pipes. The pickle pipes in the regular mouth. And then you can also buy the wooden tamper uh, separate too. So if you don't need all this in a kit or you only have regular mouths, we have the option. Yep. Good deal. And it's that time of the year where you need to be putting up that excess harvest in it. What a wonderful way to use it is pickles. Right. Yep. I got a joke for you. All right. Corny joke of the week. Corny joke of the week. Mm, I was afraid of that. What do you call a pickle sale? A pickle sale? Mm hmm. I don't know. A pickle of a deal. Pickle of a deal. A nickel mm. for a pickle? Nickel for a pickle. <laughs> yep. That's a good one there. Yeah. Pickle of a sale. How about that? Mm -hmm. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed it. Are you excited about putting up some pickles? Well, you should be. If you don't have pickles, it's definitely something to put on your to-do list. They're easy to grow. We always enjoy growing them. If I had one thing that failed me this year, if I, one thing it was my pickles, our cucumbers, cucumbers just didn't do good. We got disease in them earlier on, and, and we, we didn't do well at all. But you know what? We got another chance on this fall crop, which normally turn out well. All right, well, folks, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, get out there and get dirty. <laughs>